Hi, welcome back. I recently did a video all about my love for Bath Body Works, my addiction to candles, and I promised to come back with a candle tips video. So I'm here today to do that. It's going to be everything I've learned. I'm not an expert, but I am genuinely a candle nut. So I've picked up a lot along the way, and I wanted to share with you guys every little trick that I use to get the most out of my beloved candles. So let's go. All right, let's start talking about tools. It's kind of an obvious necessity when you're going to light a candle. There are a lot of different lighters out there. I don't think they're created equal. Um, my personal favorite is this. It's just from the dollar store. It's a lighter with a little bit of an extension on it. And I find that really helpful for getting into just about any sized candle easily without having to reach your fingers into the jar or anything like that. This is obviously good for taller candles or anything that's harder to reach, but for the most of the size candles that I use, I find this is actually the perfect size. Whereas this, you kind of almost like burn your hand when you get your hand into the jar. So I don't like to use a traditional like cigarette lighter for that. I like to use this little stubby lighter. And one thing I wanted to mention is I'm not going to go into depth on candle warmers in this video. Uh, or candle burners, which is a way of heating a candle so that the smell is released but not actually lighting the fire, and that has a lot of perks to it. People really love that method, but I have to admit, I enjoy lighting a candle. I think that's what's peaceful about it and serene. So I am an old-fashioned candle girl, but there are lots of great videos on candle burners and candle warmers too, if that's more your interest. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is the fact that a candle has a memory, <laughs> and like an elephant, it never forgets. So as you can see, this candle has been burned to about this center circle. And the next time you burn it, it's only going to burn as far as it did the last time. Ideally, to get the most out of your candles, you want them to burn cleanly all the way to the edge like this. Um, this candle happens to be a pillar candle where it's not in a jar, so I didn't specifically want to burn it to the edge so it would hold its shape. But in a jar candle, like the majority of the candles that I use and I think most people use, you want to get every last drop, so you want to make sure it burns all the way to the sides. So if you're not burning it long enough, something like this, or if you have like a little bit of a candle tragedy, something like this, where you can see this wick was like in a draft and it blew out, but these two wicks kept burning, so now I have an uneven candle surface. Things like this are really bad for getting the most out of your candle because you're going to have all this wax that's not being used on the sides. So I'm going to show you how to fix that in a second. But I just wanted to point out, first and foremost, candles have a memory. You want to burn them all the way to the edge if you can. And I, they say a rule of thumb is about an hour per inch across the candle. So, like, I don't like this candle unless I'm willing to invest the time to let it burn all the way across, like a few hours. That said, for safety reasons, you also don't want to let it burn more than, I think they say, four hours is the max. Because then you have a lot of hot wax and things can get a little bit dicey and it could even, like, explode, I think, in some rare cases. So I usually just kind of burn it long enough that it goes all the way to the edge, and then I extinguish it. And one thing I wanted to point out, here are two candle sizes from Bath & Body Works. This is called a one wick candle. Obviously because it has one wick, and this is a three wick. So you can see it's a much bigger candle, the three wick, and it's a, a bit more expensive as well. But if you actually look at the fine print on the bottom of the candle, they both burn for the same amount of time. It says approximately 25 to 45 hours. So 25 to 45 hours is a pretty huge window. It obviously means there could be a lot of different factors. You could have a draft, you could have various things that make your candle burn faster or slower. But the point that I'm trying to make is that these two candles, even though they're very different in size, burn for the same amount of time. So in a way you get the same bang for your buck. And I prefer a smaller candle because you don't have to sit and like babysit it for as long. So if I'm just going to be in the bathroom for like an hour to take a bath, I would maybe light a candle like this because that will give it probably time to burn all the way to the edges. Or you could even use an even smaller candle like this one by Trish McAvoy. I love this candle. It's like a little votive size. And this is perfect. Like I'll just burn this while I'm getting ready or something like that. As you can see, it does not have very far to burn and you can get all the way to the edges, get your money's worth out of your candle and then extinguish it and go about your day. And this is the wild blueberry vanilla scent, by the way. And I absolutely love this candle. Okay. So let's move on to actually lighting the candle. Um, it's pretty obvious perhaps, but some people might not realize I didn't until recently that you need to be trimming your candle wicks. So you can see they get this kind of like black ball at the tip of the candle. 
and that can explode, it can pop, it can burn you, it can fall in your wax, it can discolor your candle, all sorts of bad stuff, and it won't let your candle burn evenly. So before you light your candle, you always wanna trim that. Also in the case of a brand new candle, I just scored this blueberry pie from Bath My Works, smells so good. You can see that the wicks come a lot longer than you'd want them for burning. They say the ideal length to burn a wick is a quarter inch, so you can tell that's a lot longer. And that means when you first burn it, the flame might be too big, it might be a little bit wild and out of control and flickering and not burning evenly, and it's just not ideal. So to trim the wick, let me introduce some candle tools to you. I got this set on Amazon that was just the three most basic candle tools and really pretty affordable. I'll put a link in the description box down below, just a cheap set. And we'll get into all of these today and <laughs> what I think you should have. But first of all, this is the wick trimmer, and I highly recommend any candle lover has a proper whip, wick trimmer. It's basically a pair of scissors that's just made for candles, and it does such a great job of getting down into the wick and getting at that perfect quarter inch length. So I will demonstrate on this candle. The nice thing about the shape of the wick trimmer is it just does a perfect job getting right in there. And I'm gonna take this down to about a quarter inch. And the other nice thing is that it catches the extra piece of the stem on the top of the scissors because that, if you touch it, will make your fingers black and it just can kind of get soot everywhere and it's sort of a pain. So that makes it really easy to just take this straight to the trash and throw away the wick. But if you don't have a wick trimmer, you can also just use, of course, a plain pair of scissors. These are just like desk scissors and I'm just gonna put them in at like an angle since they aren't bent and trim off the wick that way. And then last but not least, if you're <laughs> lazy or you really just don't have scissors around, you can also pinch off the top of the wick with your fingers, your fingernails. I usually will take a tissue or something when I do this because it can get that black soot all over your fingers and it's kind of gross. But I just sort of pinch it. I trimmed it a bit shorter than I wanted, but it did the job and I have the wick here to throw away. So this candle is now ready for a nice smooth burn. Now let's talk about putting candles out. I think the most common way is unfortunately the wrong way, which is blowing them out. So let's talk about what happens when you blow a candle out. This is my all-time favorite candle by Jo Malone, and it's the Sweet Almond Macaroon scent. It just smells so good, and I'm gonna go ahead and blow it out and show you. There's tons of smoke that comes up, and all the lovely sweet almond scent that was lingering is now gone and replaced with the smell of smoke. And also just in an apartment, I don't like having a lot of smoke in the air. I feel like I'm gonna set off my alarm. Stuff like that is just not ideal. And you can see the edges of this candle have actually been blackened. And that's partially from blowing it out and the soot landing on the edge of the glass. Or also it might've been burning in a drafty area, like in the AC flow, and that was causing the flame to flicker. And that was creating more soot than usual or the wick might have been too long and that was also causing a problem. So not ideal situation for such a gorgeous candle, it deserves better. Another popular method that's right along those lines is putting a lid on the candle to extinguish it. So this deprives the candle of oxygen and obviously the flame will go out right away. You can see this candle already went out just from having the lid on it for a second. But a couple reasons I don't like that, I don't know if the camera picked it up, but as soon as I opened it, smoke came billowing out and by putting the lid on it, I trapped that smoke inside. So the smoke could change the scent of the candle, it could change the color of the wax on a lighter colored candle, probably not this one. And I've even had a lid get stuck before because when you blow the candle out, you create essentially a vacuum and the lid was stuck so hard I couldn't get it off. Nate, my husband, couldn't get it off. We had to throw the candle away. So. Putting the lid on to put it out doesn't always work out that well. Not my favorite method either. Another method that's fairly common, kind of old timey, is to use a snuffer. You can see this snuffer has some candle wax built up on it. And it's just a little bell shaped tool just for putting candles out. And it works really well. Um, puts the candle out pretty much immediately because there's no oxygen. There's still smoke, as you can see. So you do kind of still ruin this candle smell with the smoke smell and it does get wax on the candle dipper unless you're like really, really careful and so that needs to be cleaned up. Also, just who always has a dipper nearby? <laughs> I burn candles in every room in my house. I don't have a candle dipper in every room, so that's not my favorite method either. So let me show you my actual favorite method. I'm going to use this dipper tool and it is specifically designed for dipping the candle wick 
down into the wet wax and putting out the flame. I don't know if the picture, the camera is like doing this justice, but there is absolutely zero smoke when you do this. It's amazing. <laughs> so you just dip it into the wax and you use the tool to kind of straighten it back out so that next time it'll burn well. And there is no smoke whatsoever and it just goes out so easily. I absolutely love putting my candles out this way. I feel like it's a game changer that I had never heard of so I wanted to make sure to share it. And the smell of the candle is still so strong because I did it that way. Like all the candles I just put out I can't smell but I can smell this blueberry because such a simple method preserves the smell of the candle. It's also the best method for the health of your candle. There's no wax, there's no soot, and the wicks just got dipped in wax. So it's good to re-coat the wicks. I don't know if you've noticed when you get a new candle, the wick is coated in wax and that helps it to burn. So every time you do that, you're re-coating it and creating a better scenario. This candle isn't too happy because I just relit it without trimming the wicks, but I wanted to also show you, you don't have to have a fancy candle dipper, although I do recommend investing if you're a candle lover in just a few candle tools like this. I know that wasn't in focus, but you know what it looks like. <laughs> um, you can use anything metal, obviously. Please be extremely, extremely careful with this and with all candle safety. But I just want to show you, here's an X-Acto knife. Like at my desk sometimes, I will just use this to put the candle out, dip that into the wax, straighten the wick back up, and it works exactly the same. Obviously you have to clean a little wax off of whatever you use, but as long as, as, long as it's metal and not flammable, you can totally use this technique. So for another example, here's a paper clip that I just bent into a different shape. And like, if it has a little bit of a hook to it, you can use that. Just sort of dip it into the wax. And then always make sure you straighten it back up, otherwise your wick will start to go crooked and it might be hard to light next time. I also find with this method, my wicks are just happier. They don't have to be trimmed as much. They don't get those black balls at the top and they just burn better. So I absolutely love dipping my candles to put them out. I highly recommend it. And one other quick tip with these three wick candles from Bath and Body Works, I like to take the lid and use it as a coaster so that, first of all, you know where your lid is if you wanna keep track of it. But also it helps to protect your furniture from the candle. As the candle burns down really low, the heat is going to get obviously closer and closer to the bottom of the candle and it can heat up quite a bit. So if you have it on a nicer piece of furniture or something, you might get some heat damage. So the, I think the lid just kind of provides a little bit of a coaster and keeps it a little bit safer. So if you've been paying attention thus far, you know I've created some problems. I haven't been good, I haven't burned my candles all the way to their edge. And so now they're gonna have a memory that's not right. It's only gonna wanna burn as far as it did the last time. So to fix that, you light the candle. And then you can actually just create a tent out of plain kitchen aluminum foil. I just folded a sheet lengthwise about in thirds so it wasn't super wide. And obviously, please, please, please be so careful with this or any other step involving a lit candle. So basically you wanna fashion a little tent. So I'm just squishing this tin foil around the candle, just around the top. And you kind of want to angle it in just slightly, almost as if you're creating a chimney. And it's just going to help the candle retain more heat than it normally would. So you want to keep an eye on it. Like I said, please be careful, but this little foil jacket is going to help it to burn evenly. So we'll check back in with that in about 10 minutes. And now it's been a little while, so I'm gonna carefully take off the tin foil. Obviously watch out for the heat and the flame. But you can see this candle is completely liquidated all the way around all the edges. So it has got a perfect burn memory for next time. I'm just gonna put it out. Perfect. One other thing I just wanted to mention here, sometimes you get these little black specks in your candle. And that's because the wick was creating those balls that were falling off as it was burning. I believe it's called mushroom tabs <laughs> for the candle wicks. So sometimes I will actually just take tweezers and fish those out. Because I don't like how they visually change the look of the candle and also I feel like once the candle burns down to that point it might have like a little bit of a spark because of it. 
So just if there's any big chunks, I will fish them out. I don't like to have a lot of soot in my candles. And that's the only method I've figured out for that. If anybody else has any tips, please leave them in the comments. But I like to get those big chunks out. And just something else I want to mention on this, from a like thrifty standpoint, you can save it and reuse it. Um, since it's already kind of shaved for the kind of candles that I like to burn, I will just stick this in like a drawer or closet. And next time I have a candle that's got some issues, I can put this on there. Let's talk about reusing, recycling candle jars. I think it just feels like such a waste when you're done with the candle and you still have this beautiful jar left behind, especially the Bath & Body Works ones, they have matching lids and the opportunities are just like endless. I never throw away or even recycle a candle jar. I always just reuse it myself. So I'm gonna start by showing you the most popular method that I've always heard about, which is the freezer method. Here's a candle I put in the freezer about an hour ago. So once the candle burns out naturally, it won't light anymore. You can stick it in the freezer, let it harden for about an hour. And then you truly just take a knife and pop the wax right out. Since it's frozen, it's kind of cracking. And I can just take these chunks out. You can see the wax just falls right out in big hard pieces. To be honest, I usually skip this freezer step though. Um, I know everyone swears by it, but I'm just an instant gratification kind of girl. So I will usually go ahead and scoop the wax out myself. It's not too hard that you can't do this at this stage. So I actually just use a spoon. And I loosen up the base of the wick in the candle. So it's a little bit hard to see, but I e easily with my spoon just lift it out. So you see what was left of the wick was attached on this little metal base. Obviously you don't want to put metal anywhere near your microwave, so you have to take this really, really seriously. Just scoop it out. It's so easy because the wax is usually pretty soft and it'll come right out in one piece. And all that's left in the candle is wax. So I just continue scooping the wax out by hand as much as I can. And then when it's empty, and I'm sure there's absolutely no metal whatsoever in the jar, I will pop it into the microwave just for a few seconds. And that way what's left of the wax will soften so I can wipe it right out. So I just warmed this up for a few seconds and now it's all softened. So I can truly just wipe it out. And of course it smells amazing at this stage because it still has a little bit of the candle left. And it still has a little bit of rings at the bottom, but that should come out just with hand washing like any other dish. And I'm also gonna take the label off of this candle. So I like to just do that by picking at a corner with tweezers, save your nails. And if it doesn't want to come off easily, you can also soak it in hot soapy water, which looks like that's what I'll be doing. Also, as a side note, you can take all of this leftover wax that wasn't able to come out by burning the candle, and you can melt it down and make wax melts, put it on a wax burner. There's tons of ways to keep getting life out of your candles. I personally, just prefer to burn my candles. I don't have a candle burner, but that is another option if you enjoy using your candles that way. Another option for getting the final bits of wax or the bottom of the wick out of your candle is to put it on a pot of hot, not quite burning, but warm water. And that will instantly soften anything that's left of the wax. And you can see the metal wicks will just slide right out after that. So I've had everything soaking in hot soapy water and you can see this label is a lot more inclined to just come right off. I'm actually just gonna take this whole bottom label off using the edge of any tool. You get the paper off and then you can clean the sticky residue in the soap too. Even though I soaked it and took the labels off, this peach candle still has a lot of residue I don't know if it's showing up, but it's got like a sticker spot on it. So to get that off, I'm just going to take a paper towel and put a little bit of plain olive oil on it. 
And then just rub that into the sticky residue. And you can see after just a minute of rubbing with that, it's already come clear. And I just have to wash it with soap and water now to get the oil. And now you can see I have three beautiful new jars I can use for anything I wish. I'm gonna give you some ideas for how to use these babies. For these really small candle like votive jars, I think they're perfect to put Q-tips in like on my makeup station or in the bathroom. I also use that size candle jar for eye brushes, eye makeup brushes, and I use a larger candle jar for makeup brushes. So these look really cute on the vanity. And it's kind of a nice way to remember all the beautiful candles that you've had in the past. Another option that's great is to fill them with cotton balls or cotton pads. Um, I like that it has a lid so it kind of keeps dust or anything germy from falling into it. And it still looks really pretty like a, can a candle on the counter. And then another idea I want to show you is to use this as a little planter. So you want to put some rocks in the bottom so it has drainage. And just lined it with rocks so that there won't be any sitting water. And now I can put the soil and the plant directly on. So I have this little guy I'm just going to relocate. And you can see it's like perfect size for a really cute little succulent holder. And since it has those rocks in the bottom, it'll be a happy, healthy plant. And it looks so cute. And this would be great for gifts too. And here's one other use I have for these smaller candle holders. I will put them on the shelf as a collector for little odds and ends that don't really stand up on their own. So like these tiny serums or an eye cream or my beloved lip balm. And it just looks nice because it's obviously a beautiful candle and it keeps everything from falling over in your cabinet or you could use this in your desk or anywhere that you have little items that just kind of need to be tidied up. I also want to show something with this beloved Jo Malone candle of mine. I was kind of using it as an example for how the soot had built up, but this is such a beautiful candle and such a nice, oops, sorry, such a nice scent that I definitely wanted to clean it up and I just wanted to show you how easy that is. You can just take like a tissue and the soot literally wipes off. You can try and not get it all over yourself. Now it's like a beautiful new candle again. Obviously I'll be cleaning this one out once I'm done burning it, but I hope I never run out because it's my favorite. And it was a gift from my sweet friend Nora, so I really love this one. Next I wanted to show you what to do if you ever accidentally over trim a wick. So let me see if I can zoom you in to show you here. You see the bottom two wicks are about a quarter inch and that top one I messed up and I trimmed it way too short so now it won't light. So the trick that I've learned for that is that you just want to get a little bit of the excess wax out of the candle. You can just put something like a cotton pad or a cotton ball in and let it absorb some of the wax. And as a plus side this will smell amazing. <laughs> if you have a fireplace or something you can throw this in as kindling. So now I've just taken about two cotton pads of wax out of the candle and that should lower the level enough that I can resume lighting that wick. And ta-da, it's back to burning its happy little self. I want to talk about how to get wax splatters off of things. I don't know if you can see on my mirror, it's not showing up very well. But I have these candles in here and I tend to just be lazy and blow these out instead of dipping them out. So I don't know if you can totally see it very clearly, but there's a bit of wax splattered on this mirror and it won't come off easily. I've tried wiping it with Windex. If I scrape it with my finger, it just smears. So I'm going to show you my favorite method to get that off. I'm just taking my trusty hairdryer, any hairdryer will do, and put it on the low heat setting and just lightly heat up that wax. And now I've been heating it for a minute, so if you can see, the spots just wipe right off. I'm having a hard time focusing the camera, so hopefully you see what I'm saying. <laughs> Quick swipe with Windex and it is crystal clear. All the wax is totally gone and you can use this method on like furniture, carpeting, anything that spills wax where you don't want it. For one more trick here, I wanted to show you another way to get every last drop out of your candle. So I have this berry waffle cone, my all time favorite scent, and it's almost out. And I have this brand new berry waffle cone, ah, clean, fresh candle, it's a beautiful thing. 
and I want to make sure I use all of this wax. So this candle is about to reach the point where it won't burn anymore. I'm actually kind of rushing the process a little bit so I can show you guys, but I'm going to go ahead and put the candle out. And now since all of this wax has liquefied, I can pour it right on top of the new candle since it's in the same scent and make sure I get to use all of it. I'm going to make sure the candle's perfectly level. And this is one plus of how the wicks do come a bit longer when you have a fresh candle. So you can really use that extra height. You don't want to put more wax than would reach the top of the wicks. But you can get a good extra inch in your candle that way and save it from not being burned. I also have friends that will mix all the leftover flavors of all their different candles into one like mystery candle with a new wick. And you can certainly do that if you want. I don't, I don't feel like that would smell too great, but it's an option. And it's a good candle to use like when the power goes out or something. So now I just added about three quarters of an inch to this candle. I'm going to let that wax harden and it will be literally good as new. And I got a little bit of extra use out of my new candle and my old candle. And as an added bonus, since I just got rid of all that wax, I was able to just pop the wicks right out, wipe it clean. And now I can wash it and I'll have another beautiful, gorgeous jar that I can do whatever I want with. And I just wanted to show you now that, that wax I added has hardened. You can tell it looks, you know, basically still like a brand new candle. And the wicks just won't have to be trimmed as much. But I have got an extra little half inch on the top of my candle. I hope you guys got some good tips. I hope the incredible scent of berry waffle cone is just like <laughs> wafting through my camera onto you somehow right now. And I hope you just got some fuel for the fire of your own candle love. <laughs> so let me know your candle tips and tricks down in the comments below. And make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't yet for more candle obsessed goodness. And I will talk to you guys soon and I'll see you in my next video.